Hey there, hey there, God bless you. It's your girl, Benita. I am about to begin our book talk. I just can't forgive. just want to kind of fix my, hopefully my light will come on. Got a light right here. And we're going to continue. Hold on a second. We're going to continue in the chapter called We Need a Revelation. We'll get ready to pray in a few minutes. And we're going to go right into this. We should be spend some time together till about... Well, we're just going to finish this. Hopefully, we're going to finish this, this section of the book. We need a revelation. And we'll be able to move on from there. Trying to get my light, get my light straightened out. God bless you to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I like this book. I wrote this book as a result of feeling so misunderstood as a um, Christian when I was hurting. Um, a lot of times we know that a person needs to get to a certain place in their response, um, but it's not easy just to get there, especially after you have been hurt over and over again, after your heart has just felt like it has been shattered completely. Um, it's easier said than done to forgive, especially if we don't have clarity about what the word forgiveness really means. So we're going to pray and then we're going to jump right in the book. We're going to be on page 50. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens when our emotions are, are buried and hurt. And then we're going to go over the definition of a revelation again and continue in that area. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to go into this narrative. I thank you for the revelations that you taught me about forgiveness. When you taught me what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not. I pray, Father God, that your people, Father, will receive the word in a spirit of love in Jesus' name. I pray that they will understand the importance of forgiveness and how it affects their physical health, health, their psychological health, health, you know, Lord God, their emotional health. Father, we thank you and praise you that you will help in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're on page 50. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about emotions buried in hurt. It says here, when our emotions are buried in hurt, it is very difficult to make wise decisions. It's hard to make wise decisions when we are hurting. I'm going to say it again. It's hard to make wise, healthy decisions when we are hurting. When you are blinded with anger, blinded with frustration, hurt, fear, whatever it is, it's difficult to make a wise decision. Learning how to release somebody or release an offense is a spiritually wise decision. However, if our emotions are ruling at the time, it's going to be a challenging task. Amen. It says here the enemy can easily take advantage, take advantage of us while we are in this state. And in some cases, he will paralyze us with such emotional pain and hate filled thinking to a point where we cannot forgive. Sometimes you can be so bombarded with the hurt, you're blinded by the hurt, you're blinded by the humiliation, you're blinded by all these things that you're stuck and you cannot move, you're paralyzed and you cannot forgive. Amen. It says for some, there must be an encounter with the spirit of God. And this is what happened to me. There was an encounter with the Spirit of God in order to be freed. We need an illumination or revelation from God. So in this series, in this particular section in the book, we're talking about a revelation. I kind of started, we already went over a little bit of this um, before. We should be able to finish out this section. Um, went over really, it was like two, two um, sessions we've had on this section. 
I believe for me, this is the most important section because for me, this is where my healing came is once I got a revelation. Once I was able to look at the situation in a different angle, a different perspective, I was able to look at forgiveness in a different angle, a different perspective. I was able to obtain it, to reach it. Amen. Some of you are struggling right now with the area of forgiveness. And one thing that you need to begin to pray is God, give me a revelation so that I can walk in forgiveness. It's imperative that you walk in forgiveness. Amen. It goes on to say here, a revelation is a divine and previously unknown spiritual truth that is disclosed to someone from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God gives revelation. He's opening something that was previously um, unknown. He's opening the eyes of our understanding. So we have to ask God for that, especially Especially those of us who have gone through traumatic experiences, sometimes you can be frozen in the hurt and the pain to the point that you cannot move forward. And it's to our detriment not to be able to move forward. And it gives the enemy greater access to us. Amen. And so we have to ask God, we need help. Uh, Revelation is a spiritual unveiling that gives us a new way of perceiving a matter, a new way of looking at forgiveness, a way that we don't have within ourselves to do. But the spirit of God is so amazing that he can give us a new way to look at forgiveness. Amen. And because it's going to be imperative because we don't just have to forgive in those hard places. But in every day, do you know how many times we're in situations that are potentially offensive on a daily basis, even before you get out the house? Come on, somebody. So it's going to be very important. And when we look at Matthew 18 and the consequences that come when we make a decision not to forgive, and it can happen because we say, I got this. I talked about that a little bit um, up here when we move into what we call listen to this when we move into a protective mode and we decide to handle the situation by holding on to a grudge which is honestly understand understandable we are building a wall between us and God with bricks made of pride we're saying to God I got this you didn't do what I needed you to do to protect me I'm going to take care of this situation Okay, pride separates us from God and pride separates us from the flow of the spirits. So now we're open to the devil and his destruction. It simultaneously positions us to be open, pray for the enemy. Okay, it says because the average person's thoughts are far from discerning the destructive ploy of the enemy. It's a trick of the devil. Okay, Um, our thoughts are far from discerning this destructive ploy of the enemy. We can easily find ourselves caught in a web of unforgiveness compounded by our initial wounds. It is indeed a deep and destructive well. So when we find ourselves, you know, feeling like we will not forgive an individual, right? We don't realize that we are in a very potentially dangerous place spiritually, okay? It goes on here to say, we're moving on back to the revelation, right? I needed a spiritual enlightenment. Listen to what I have to say here. I needed a spiritual enlightenment that had a greater weight, than the offense that I encountered. So if I if I absolutely cannot stand somebody, I need God to open up my understanding, give me an enlightenment that has a greater weight than the offense. It says here, personally, I needed a godly satisfaction within me that superseded the satisfaction that the enemy had offered me of holding on to the offense. The the devil has a way of making us feel good and justified about holding on to an offense. 
I'm not going to let that go. That's what, this is the kind of thoughts that are in our mind. I'm not going to let that go. I'm not going to just let him get off the hook. And what we don't realize is that forgiveness allows us to get off the hook. Amen. Because holding a grudge, holding an emotional um, grudge, right? It, it's not hurting the person. Or if it, if it does hurt the person, it's hurting us too. Okay. Sometimes the person is hurt by the fact that we don't want to communicate with them. We don't want to be around them. We don't want to have anything to do with them, but it's hurting us also. Okay. And we need to understand that it's a trick of the devil, but it's a trick that we can easily uh, fall prey to because of the emotional issues. So we need help. It says here, revelations about the benefit of forgiving someone can motivate us to remain in and progress through the healing process. There's a process of healing. And when I have a revelation that's weightier than the offense, when the devil tries to reattach me to being offended, you know, because he'll bring it back up in your mind. He'll remind you. He'll replay. Um, he'll make you look at the person in a certain way. You see them. They, you know, you look at them and they're they're moving something, and you're wondering why they moving that. They always want to mess up my life. There's a lot of stuff that can go on there. But if I can say right there, if I could put back in my mind and remember whatever the the uh, illumination was, I'm able to push past. I'm not going to give in to this. Because why? Because of whatever the revelation is, it's heavier. It weighs heavier than the offense. Okay, a revelation um, about the benefit of forgiving someone can shield us from the enemy, like I said, attempting to re-entrap us with unforgiveness. It gives us power. It, we can stabilize our emotions. Okay, it says here by being grounded and renewed in our thinking as a result of revelatory truth, truth as a result of God and encounter with the Holy Spirit, opening up our eyes, giving us an illumination, helping us to perceive the matter that we have gone through in a different way that's going to benefit us spiritually, right? We can emerge from a spiritual crisis. God. God is such an amazing helper. The spirit of God helps us. We can emerge from a spiritual crisis because we have a revelation. As we maneuver through the healing process of forgiveness, our emotions will be cleansed and restored. And our thinking will slowly and deliberately be renewed by spiritually liber to a spiritually liberated state. So there has to be a renewing of your mind. There has to be a level of maturity. There has to be a level of, of learning how to put away um, and pushing past the bruise. But as you are being healed, you are, you know, maybe sitting in, in worship music. You may be listening to healing scriptures. You may actually benefit from looking at other people who have been through situations that were very detrimental to them and they came out on top. They came out in a positive vein that can motivate you. That can let you know if they're able to do what I can too. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Sometimes the things that people go through are worse than what you went through. And you have to know they're just a human being and the way that they got through it, you can too. If we have a revelation, right? It says here, once we come to this place, um, well, if we'll free us from the claws of the devil, the devil has, doesn't have a grip on us anymore. Once we come to a place of saying, no, I'm, I am going to receive the, living in a place of forgiveness, right? Once we come to this place of spiritual equ equ equilibrium, we will be able to move to the next stage. The next stage, which um, is to let go of the emotional tie that we have established with negative emotions and negative thoughts. So when we are in, in the claws of the enemy and we are in a state of not forgiving someone, 
We have an emotional tie with the thoughts and the emotions that go with the offense. We are connected to them. We have aligned ourselves with them, right? And so if I have a revelation, if I have an illumination, if the spirit of God is allowing me to look at the offense in a different way, and that revelation is has carries a greater weight than the offense, then I'm able to begin to move through this process. I'm able to loose myself from the emotional tie, all right? Through holding on to and meditating on a revelation. Hold on for dear life <laughs> hey, to your revelation. Through holding on to and meditating on a revelation, I progressed from hating my husband to tolerating him to being his friend and then his lover. So there was a progression. I wasn't able to jump over to living in a place of releasing him immediately. And this is the issue that I want you to understand that it's okay. When you look at the level and the depth of what you have gone through, when you look at the maybe repetitive hurt, abuse, neglect, all those things that, that, that you have gone through and you're posturing yourself to forgive somebody, you got to give yourself an opportunity. That's a lot of mess to be, um, uh, to um, distangle yourself, to become unentangled with. It's a lot. So you have to give yourself a, an opportunity. If people um, understand that or acquiesce to that or not, or people tell you, you better hurry, you need to get over that, let that stuff go and all that, you have to know that I'm doing my best to posture myself, to release this stuff, to change my mindset and all that, but I'm hurting right now. Okay? And so it says here, my revelatory progression helped me to move from one stage to another. When I got that revelation and God allowed me to look at forgiveness in a different light, a different way, it was an aha moment, right? And so I was able to use that revelation to continue to go through a healing process. I went from being paralyzed by the hurt and unable to forgive to knowing I should forgive, but not wanting to forgive. Then I went to wanting to forgive, but still not able to forgive. And then I moved from forgiveness by faith. Okay. And I had that forgiveness. And then, then I was able to seek and receive reconciliation and then move to loving my husband again. That was a process. That was a time that was a time um, consuming process. Okay. It says here, personally speaking, the revelation that I received that empowered me, excuse me, that empowered me and sustained me through my struggle to forgive was that I had given the behavior of my husband too much power. I had given him too much power, right? I had given the behavior of my husband too much power. I realized that not forgiving Dwayne was going to continue to disrupt my peace. It was hurting me. Disrupt my peace and prevent me from having the opportunity to gain access to walk through spiritual doors and fulfill assignments that God had ordained for me. See, it puts a big stop sign up there. You, you know, people may have prophesied to you about, you know, this, that, and the other. God's going to use you this way and use you that way. But if we are not in a place of forgiveness, we are blocking ourselves from going through those doors. It says here, in addition, the anger that I had towards God did not negate the fact that I still needed him. That's something I was talking about again today. I still needed God. Even though I was frustrated, even though I was disappointed. A lot of times when we're angry with God, it's simply because we lack understanding. And once we get that understanding, then we're able to, to get it as to why we went through certain things that we went through. Once we're able to see a, a greater outcome, you know, once the dots connect, once we are healed and we have a testimony, we're able to move on. It says here, 
So I realized that if I allowed God, the same God, to bring me out, maybe things would work together for my good and I could help someone else to be free. That's what I thought. And it did happen. It is especially important for us to grasp this concept in the body of Christ. Instead of attempting to make a brother or sister in Christ feel ashamed that they are struggling with forgiving someone. So that's a a lesson for us. The fact that sometimes the hurt and the pain can be so deep, so devastating, that you can't just jump over it. Say, hallelujah, glory to the king, and I get over it. No, because there are different measures. There are different um, depths of offense. If you step on, stomp on my toe, that's one thing. If you smash my car window, that's something else. If you destroy my heart, that's something else. Those are different levels of offenses and as different emotional emotions that go along with those. Okay? No matter how much you want to get, get back to a place of emotional equilibrium. Sometimes you just can't get it like that. Amen. And you have to give yourself room to go. Sometimes you you can't even have your breath. You haven't even got your breath. (laughs) It's hard. Amen. But we understand that that's the place. That's our goal is to get back there. It says here, we need to always remember that it only takes a single offense to move us into a place of unforgiveness. It just takes one little something, something. (laughs) And you can be in a place of unforgiveness. Just because all is well in our life today, at this moment, there is no guarantee that things will remain that way. We are all capable of falling into a situation or facing a crisis in which we find it difficult to forgive someone. All right. And it says here, let's interact with others, keeping this truth in mind. So we're going to get ready to stop right there. That's the end of, let's see. Yes. The scripture that I have here, Romans 12 and 2, for I say to every man that is among you through the grace given unto me, not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Don't think you are so beyond struggling with um, forgiveness. Don't do that. Don't think that you have you have just arrived at a place spiritually that you could never have that issue. It just may be that you have not had to deal with, face, endure a certain level of offense. And when you have that, then you may be able to understand, you'll be able to understand what other people go through who are struggling, people who have had years and years of abuse, people who have had certain traumas and things that have happened to them, people who have been hurt innocently. It's so easy to be on the outside. It's so easy to, to speak from a place of strength while you everything's flowing in your life. And so a part of what this book is for the body of Christ to understand, we need to be more sensitive. I received that for myself. We need to be more sensitive. We really do need the heart of God. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. We're going to get ready to stop here. The next section that we have is from revelation to liberation. Amen. We're going to keep on plug, um, plugging right through this. This book, again, the name of this book is I Just Can't Forgive. If you are a member of Unshackled or if you hear this, this particular broadcast um, tonight and you would like to have a PDF copy of this book, all you need to do is to tag me and um, I will make sure that I email that to you. If you want a hard copy of this book that we are going through on Unshackled from Depression and Anxiety every weekend, right? You want a hard copy of this book, then you are invited to go to amazon.com and to, to get that. Again, it's called, I just can't forgive. It's to assist us. We are human beings and there are things that are difficult. There's moments that are difficult and we need to learn how to be more sensitive and allow ourselves to, um, you know, let the spirit of God help us through those hard places. It doesn't matter how much we try to pretend like we don't have those hard places. We do have those hard places, but so many of us in the body of Christ are so 
uncomfortable with vulnerability. And if we're comfortable or not, we do feel vulnerable at times. And it's okay. Amen. It's okay. Well, God bless you. God bless you. It has been a pleasure to speak to you in reference to um, this particular section called We Need a Revelation from the book, I Just Can't Forgive. God bless you until we meet again. Loving kisses to you.